Hello and welcome to the Fave English podcast, your one-stop shop for Venezuelan football in English, bringing you fortnightly episodes dedicated to the Venezuelan league, the national teams and the myriad of Venezuelan players around the world. Hello and welcome to a special edition of the Fave English podcast, one of three previewing the Toulon tournament for Venezuela and their opposition. Having already faced Indonesia and Mexico, Venezuela's final group game is Ghana. And at the time of recording prior to the tournament, the squad list hasn't been officially announced, but the Ghana Football Association has confirmed that under-20 team will be participating, suggesting it will be more or less the same players that participated in the WAFU under-20 championship earlier this month. Ghana Soccer Net described that as an abysmal campaign, including losses to Nigeria and Burkina Faso. But this is Ghana's third participation after debuting in the tournament in 2000 and playing again in 2007. Here joining us to discuss Ghana's team for the tournament is award-winning sports journalist Sadiq Adams from Ghana. Sadiq, thank you very much for joining us. How are you? Thank you very much for having me. Everything is well here in Ghana, Accra. And also a thank you to Oliver Arthur for putting us in contact. Oliver for Venezuelan listeners, listeners will be more familiar to them than they think, for he is in fact the agent of Caracas football club winger, uh, Ossie Bonsu. Oliver, what can you tell us about the Ghana squad heading into the tournament? Well, thank you very much. Uh, this is one of uh, too many Ghanaians. The under-20 team uh, is a bedrock of our football. It's, it's been the focus for a very long time, Ghana has built a lot of our strong national teams by heavily relying on the under-20 sides, uh, like the World Cup winning side of 2009. Uh, we've gotten closer to the World Cup uh, in 2013 semi-final. So we just um, so much focused on building very strong under-20 sides. But this particular team, too many, is a uh, way underperforming, is an underwhelming side, very disastrous campaign. As defending champions of the African Under-20 Championship, they even failed to make it out of the groups in Benin, in the WAFU, that is the West African Under-20 Championship. So generally, a lot of Ghanaians are not that enthused about this particular Ghana Under-20 side because it's a country that has won the Under-20 before, World Cup, the only African country to do so. So there is the trajectory there. There is the path there in terms of under-20 performances. But this one is not a team that too many has the strength and capacity to reach the heights of the previous under-20 teams. And although the squad isn't announced as of yet, I'm sure you've probably got a good idea of at least the key players or players to look up, out for that would be participating, uh, particularly where it's expected to be largely the same team that played in that under-20 championship. So, in your opinion, who are the key players of this squad or who are the players that Venezuela should fear the most? Really, the, the key players in the team are those who play in the top flight Ghanaian league, uh, basically uh, young players who have been able to break into the first teams of some of the biggest clubs in the country. Talk about Augustine in Japan, plays for Asante Kotoko, one of the most impressive right-backs in the Ghanaian league, was pitched from uh, a lower division side, came to Asante Kotoko, obviously, a very well-known club on the African continent, record Ghana Premier League champions, two times winners of the African Champions League, and has been able to break into the team uh, by uh, outshining a former Black Stars player, uh, Christopher Nete. So this, I guess, in Japan, 18, 19 years, very solid and lanky right back. Uh, once he's been able to break into the Asante Kotoko senior team, obviously one of the well-known faces of this under-20 side. There is also Gregory or Ben Setre. Despite being the goalkeeper of this team, he is the first choice goalkeeper of the Ghana under-20 side, plays for Brekum Chelsea. Uh, former winners of the Ghana League, very young chap, a student of the University of Ghana, also keeps the post for the University of Ghana. Very interesting chap, has, has been able to weave his way into the under-20 side by commanding a lot of games 
in the Ghana Premier League for Breko Michalsi. So he's a goalkeeper though, but very well known, very agile, very, very uh, quick. And his position in his classic, uh, it, it, some people think that uh, it beggars believe why he was able to help Ghana qualify in the Wafu tournament uh, in, uh, in Niger. But he is one of the key players to look out for. But the biggest of them all is Zubeiru Ibrahim, who plays for Kim Faisal in Ghana, the top scorer of the team, scored in some of the qualifiers they played, uh, scored uh, six goals for Kim Faisal, has four assists in the Ghana Premier League, uh, was, was already tormenting defenders in the beginning stages of the Ghana Premier League, but wasn't able to keep the momentum because he was called to the under-20 side, but one of the sharp strikers on the Ghanaian uh, local scene. So, two, 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 I mean, sports pundits and Ghanaian football fans, uh, these are the three key players in the team. But the biggest of them all is Zubeiru and the captain of the side as well. He's the captain of the team, the top scorer of the team, and also one of the top scorers of the Ghana Premier League, despite playing lesser matches than those ahead of him. So, uh, it, basically, these are some of the big names in the team. There is a Collins Poa of Dreams FC, who is a midfielder, Emmanuel Hano. But the three biggest names are uh, the goalkeeper, Gregory Setre, right back of Kestin in Japan, uh, and the top scorer of the team, uh, who doubles as the captain, uh, talk about Zubeiru Ibrahim of Kim Faisal FC in Ghana. So from, from what you've said there, it sounds like quite a, quite a few of the, the key players uh, of Ghana's team for this tournament are already star players in the Ghanaian league. Is the Ghanaian league in general quite a, a young league or is it that just the, the better players are the younger players? Yeah, it's it's become a, a young league because um, the Ghanaian league used to attract some of the biggest talents on the continent 20 years ago, uh, 30 years ago. But because of the financial uh in, in capacity of the clubs they don't have the financial muscle now to be able to attract so a lot of the clubs are relying heavily on players who are from the youth sides and also from some of the lower divisions because they cannot buy big players from across africa so they rely heavily on some of the lower division players who impress in some of these trial matches so Basically, the Ghana League has become a very young league. Uh, the best player of the league last season uh, is, is, is less than 23 years. Um, the best player this season, uh, it, it's, it's less than 22 years. Of course, he's even 20 years, but a Cameroonian. And um, the best, uh, the top scorer of the league last season as well. A lot of the big names in the Ghana Premier League are below the ages of 20, 22 or 21. So it's a young league because you cannot attract top players from across Africa. So there's a, there has been an over-reliance on youth players to play in the top flight. It's, it, that draws heavy comparisons with Venezuela, actually. Uh, for example, the player of the year in Venezuela last year, was our 18-year-old Yerson Chacon, who is playing in this Toulon tournament here, played Ghana. And the young player of the year, Tilasco Segovia, who's actually two months older than the player that won the player of the year, he's also in the Toulon tournament. And the top scorer, right. the top scorer in Venezuela last season was 22-year-old Samson Akinula, who's a Beninese Nigerian, um, who came from Seneca the year before. So it sounds like there's quite a few shared characteristics between the Venezuelan league and the, the Ghanaian league. Ex exactly, exactly. Very young leagues and uh, top players emerging from the leagues are, are below 22, 21. That, that tells it's uh, clubs relying on youth players and getting them to have the platform before they exit to other bigger clubs. Yeah, yeah, very much so. And this, this tournament itself is going to be a platform for Venezuela, particularly it being its first participation in the tournament. For Ghana, how far do you think your country can go in this tournament? I think that um, they will be spared on by the defeats, uh, by the uh, exits in the Wafu tournament because there's been so much uh, backlash for the team uh, back home. People know the level, they know the standard of our under 20. So the coach has an opportunity now to rewrite the wrongs of the Wafu tournament. He's 
he's a champion of Africa. Last um, edition failed to make it this time. Uh, has a very good opportunity to uh, get to this tournament in France and also uh, talk to the players to be able to put out performances. Of course, by now he already knows his uh, first team. Those who made mistakes in uh, Niger will not be fielded again or will be given second opportunity to also make amends. So th there is going to be a completely different, I mean, transformation from the team that played in the Wafu to the one that will be playing in France in this tournament because obviously it will not be proper and Ghanaians are not going to take any excuses for this second opportunity. And this is what makes a lot of us think that Ghana, the Ghana national team will be quite different in this tournament than what they did in the Wafu tournament, which was uh, supposed to be the qualification for the African tournament. So if the coach is able to win in this, perform creditably well, he will, he will appease the fans, he will maintain his position the Ghana Football Association will have a leg in to back him to keep his seat, uh, the, the, the role as the head coach. If he, if he fails in this tournament, he's going to leave the post because there's too much pressure on him now to, to, to exit the, the, the coaching seat of the under-24, another person to take over, basically because he lost or got uh, eliminated in the tournament. So I'm sure that that is going to spare their bone, not too much pressure on them but they will be able to transform the team and then get a better uh, performance than what they did. So I'm sure that they will, they will go far. Um, there are group games. I look at the groups and I see uh, countries that Ghana will be facing. I think that obviously uh, this is the time for the, the, the Black Sunlight to be able to, I mean, turn up a very good leaf and uh, give out a very impressive performance in this tournament, maybe to the semi-finals or finals of the tournament. It's, it's, it's not beyond them. They have the capacity to do just that things didn't go well in Niger and they blame weather, particularly the heat in Benin. Uh, in Niger, was over 40 degrees Celsius when they played their matches. And yeah. this is what, they, yeah, of course, they blame uh, the, the heat, uh, excess heat or excessive heat in uh, Niger for their lack of, I mean, performance in that tournament. So going to France and having a very conducive uh, weather and um, pitches and also uh, like they say we say back home the Ghanaian players perform well when they have the right kind of environment and France is going to provide that and with the you, you say obviously the fans there's quite a bit of pressure from them on the head coach and the fans are understandably disappointed with how they've performed uh, in the under 20 championship this year with with that in mind and in general with the attitude um towards football uh that that, that Ghan the Ghanaian football culture has do you expect many people in Ghana to be watching the games and following this tournament closely or is this something that will go on in the background and they they find out about afterwards i think it will be um followed keenly by journalists uh, for the fans this is not um one of the tournaments that unless of course the ghana team does well and gets to the uh let's say final stages or the knockout stages of the competition some of the big name players in the league are able to impress and i mean stand out people will, i mean naturally follow to see how they are performing but it's not too much talked about by fans only a few journalists reporting about it because um, the, the, the tournament is not as big as the World Cup. This is a team that has played in the World Cup and won. It's a team that's played in the African uh, Under-20 Championship and won, uh, played second and, and all that. So the, the standard has been higher uh, than this tournament. But of course, once the team gets to the, the, the knockout stages and, I mean, shows uh, performances that journalists are talk, should talk about, it will draw more eyeballs uh, of the fans to watch. But as at the moment, it's not one of the popular, I mean, tournament that fans will be keenly following, except for sports journalists here. Yeah, no, it, it makes sense. Before I moved to Venezuela, when I was, you know, living in England and, and as an Englishman and an English football fan, um, you know, England won the Toulon tournament three years on the trot. And 
you know, to be perfectly honest, I didn't even know they were playing in the tournament. It's not, <laughs> exactly. it's not really spoken about, despite the fact this is a very prestigious competition. But, you know, being in Venezuela in the build up to this competition amongst football fans, you know, there's um, a lot of excitement that Venezuela are participating because, you know, it's in Europe, it's in front of European scouts and clubs, and it's against countries that Venezuela would never normally play. Um, so it's got a lot of injury. Um, I have yeah, one yeah. final question, but it's not to do with the Toulon tournament, but it is to do with Ghanaian and Venezuelan football. Um, has there been much interest uh, in Ghana towards uh, the career of, of Ossi Bonsu in, in Venezuela? He's been in Caracas now in his third season, and it looks like it will be his last season as well. It doesn't look like his stay at Caracas. But in that time, um, Venezuela finished runners-up in the league. They played in the group stages of Copa Libertadores twice. Um, Bonsu has scored in the Copa Libertadores as well. Uh, so, you know, it's in Venezuela, it's got a lot of attention, particularly because he's been here at the same time as Samson Akinula and Ade Ogans uh, from Nigeria and Benin. And the, the three of them, although Ogans has been injured uh, for a large period of time, have bought... Um, something fresh to the league. And now there's other clubs in Venezuela looking to Africa to sign players. Yes, it's it's becoming, it used to be an exotic destination for Ghanaian players or African players, but uh, it, it's becoming quite normal to hear Ghanaian players I mean, playing in uh, Venezuela, especially for uh, Kwaku uh, Bonsu. Uh, he, he's not that big here, to be very honest. He's mm -hmm. not a player who uh, is well followed in Ghana because, of course, he played a very few matches in Ghana for Bechem United before yes. he, he yeah. moved. And uh, Oliver, you know, Oliver Atta has been very close to Bechem United and the club, uh, I mean, for players getting them into tournaments in Europe. So they did not make such a name in Ghana before they departed because they left as youth players, yeah. uh, obviously. Yeah. Not a lot of people know them here before he went to Sedeca and now Caracas. But I believe that with the performance, I mean, he's put up this season and uh, a very few uh, people have uh, started following. Uh, there are goalkeepers like Akologo, who's playing in South America and receiving, I mean, some sort of, I mean, plaudits and uh, keen interest uh, being followed. Uh, the Ghana Football Association actually sent an invitation to a player playing in the South American League. It's quite unusual uh, for, for, for such to happen. So uh, with the likes of uh, Kinola and uh, Osei Bonsu and some of the Ghanaian players there, it's beginning to open a new wave of I mean, interest for Ghanaians because naturally we think that South Americans are, uh, are quite um, similar to West Africans in terms of play. But there's too much quality in South America for an African player to be able to break through. But these guys are doing it on a regular basis. And currently, a lot of I people have started, I mean, gaining interest. And not only fans, footballers are, have also seen the, the escape way for them, not being able to pass through to Europe easily. They will choose to, I mean, play in uh, uh, I mean, places like uh, Venezuela, where their talents will be honed. So for me, I follow... I mean, guys from that side, especially for uh, uh, Osai Bonsu because of his, his skill and uh, how pacey he is. That's the natural Ghanaian way of playing and getting uh, so much interest from Venezuelans who I think will be, will be excited by his talent. And to a point, uh, what, what really gets Ghanaians interested in people like Osai Bonsu is when they hear that, that, that Venezuela would want to get him switch his nationality. Of course, it becomes a big story here, uh, but because they did not have a very uh, huge career here, a massive uh, I mean, uh, league performances, they are not really followed. But uh, to be very honest, it's becoming a new wave of um, entry for Ghanaian players to places, uh, especially for Venezuela. Actually... Yeah. If a Ghanaian player can get a chance to play in the Venezuelan top flight, a lot of I mean kids here will have the interest of okay, I can even go to Venezuela before I get a chance to go to Europe. So it's beginning to uh, excite a lot of players that wherever they get the opportunity. In the past, 
they will only want to go to Europe. If you mention Venezuela, and none of the players will be interested to go. But now, a lot of them are being excited about the prospects of playing there. Yeah, and, and Bonsu uh, isn't the only Ghanaian in the league at the moment. There's another one, Adjun Livingston, who's been in Venezuela for around, yeah. I think, six or seven years now, minus one season that he was he was elsewhere. Imagine, and, yes. And Imagine I, spoke that. To, I spoke to Adjun uh, when I wrote I wrote a book on Venezuelan football um, a year or two ago, and I interviewed Adjun for the book. And it really interested me that outside of football, he was saying that, you know, when his career is, his football career is over, you know, he actually looks forward to staying in Venezuela and living in Venezuela. And he was talking about taking up Venezuelan citizenship and moving his family over here. And, um, you know, for Venezuelan football fans to hear that was, was, you know, quite heartwarming because a lot of Venezuelans, not in football, just in general, over the past 10 years, the, the story has been about how many Venezuelans want to leave and have left. So for a, a foreign player to come here and actually want to call it home, um, is, is a big deal, sort of in the same way that you say the interest in Bonsu and players like that pick up back home in Ghana when they hear about, you know, Venezuelan football fans wanting them to see nationality. And, 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 and to be very honest, um, the stories from players who played there uh, for Ajen, for uh, uh, Bonsu, it's always um, one of very positive stories. They share mm -hmm. very positive stories about their, their stay there that used to be a myth that uh, you can't stay in Venezuela you can't stay in places like uh, Peru, you can't stay there and, and play football as an African but then uh, stories of how some of the few Ghanaian footballers who have come there for Bonsu have heard it personally from him how, how excited he is to play there, how he's been accepted by the people, how positive the stories are and these are the, I mean, very little ones because for people like Oliver, uh, Arthur, this is what they need to convince footballers to be able to take to that route. Uh, if, if you want to go to uh, Europe, you can still play in Venezuela. But if you don't know how to survive in Venezuela, there are stories of who have gone there before. And there are very great stories, very positive stories. So I don't doubt when you say you, you spoke to the Ghanaian player, and he ha had, I mean, some nice words to talk about Venezuela and how he would have wanted to move his family there and settle there. Of course, these are the stories that entice, I mean, some of the young footballers to also take to, to the path. So from what I've heard from Bonsu and a few others, um, like Venezuela is not uh, uh, in, in the minds of a lot of Ghanaians, especially those in the football fraternity, it's, it comes with some sort of positive waves. They go there, they are accepted. The country has I mean, some great uh, uh, feeling of football. Their passion is there. You can still play football. Once you do well and you live a very good life, you'll be accepted. So anybody at all can come there. These are the stories that we hear, very positive stories from the country. Yeah, and that, 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 that's going to be great for Venezuelan football fans to hear that that's that's the growing reputation and, and it's thanks to players like Bonsu and even earlier in the 90s there was a striker at Caracas uh, Ibrahim Salisu who scored Ibrahim over Salisu, goals yes. and you know he was at Caracas for you know over five well over five years and got goals in the Copa Libertadores against big clubs from Brazil Argentina the rest of the continent so it's you know it, it, it's definitely growing and it seems like Venezuela and, and Ghana are two young footballing countries in terms of, you know, where their talent lays at the moment. And it should be an exciting decade for this young generation coming through. Yeah, great. That's, that's exactly how, how you would want it to be. Uh, you, you spoke about Ibrahim Salisu. Uh, I don't know what happened to him after his stay in Venezuela, but of course, uh, we heard stories of him settling there. Um, he used to have some uh following here because he was from a community uh in ghana before he he traveled out to to europe and then um settled in netherlands i remember uh growing up he had a, another brother who played in the ghana league so he had some sort of following a lot of people looked forward to him coming back to the national team as a very robust midfielder and i could score goals from anywhere on the field very a giant. I remember all those stories about Salisu, but then 
breaking through then as early as um, the early, uh, I mean, 90s, in 91, he was still playing there. Uh, I'm sure that he stayed there for a long time, but we don't know what happened to him because he stayed in that country for more than 30 years, if I, if I, 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 mean, I know, and he's not still been back in Ghana. Wow. Okay. Well, Sadiq, thank you very much for, for joining me this evening. I've, I've really appreciated your time and I know that it's, it's going to make good listening for, for Venezuelan football fans and, and football fans in general that are watching the Toulon tournament. I think perhaps we've got two countries that are going to um, excite uh, perhaps as a surprise. So thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. Great. Thank you for having me too.